sitting on the couch with us right now. I have Charles Harden. He's here with the Blowing Rock Chamber of Commerce. And there's always so much going on over at the Blowing Rock Chamber, and we always enjoy having you guys on the show. Well, thank you. We love being here. Absolutely. Enjoy it. Well, thank you. And so talk to us a little bit about what's going on at the Chamber. Well, <clears throat> as you probably know from living here over the years, March is probably the slowest month of the season up here. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I, I think that's probably because, you know, spring is already in the air off the mountain. And so it is very difficult to motivate people to come up here in March. Right. Because uh, we're still in stick season, really. Yes. So um, now we still have skiing, obviously, and right. uh, spring skiing is probably the best, as far as I'm concerned, at least. So um, that'll continue on through mid-March, maybe even late March in some cases. but. Um, trying to get people to come up here this time of year, we've spent a lot of money over the years trying to do that, and this weather is just kind of blustery and variable, right. as we know from just the past 24 hours, so yes. it can change on a dime. It's <coughs> like we, this past week. <laughs> that's right. You can have 70, uh, 65 at least, and then you can drop down into the teens like last night. Yeah, so, it was what, 19, something like that? Yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> we know that everybody here is looking forward to the color coming back. and um, So, generally what we tell our, our members is that um, if they haven't been on vacation somewhere warm, mm -hmm. March is the time to go. That's it. So, a lot of the businesses actually, some of our businesses in Blowing Rock actually will close for a week or two in March and go completely mm -hmm. on vacation. So. Now, that's not to say that we don't have businesses still open. I mean, last weekend I was surprised that the town was very busy. It was beautiful last weekend, it too. It was. <laughs> and <clears throat> so people will still come up. But it is a good time to, to take a, a vacation. Um, and then the other thing that we're telling people is that it's time to get ready for the spring. Mm -hmm. So, um, Like 12 days? I'm counting it down. <laughs> <laughs> I know that... Um, Everybody's talked a lot about the economy, and there's some good indicators in the economy right now. As um, most people may know or may not, the, the, the high country is one of the last areas to go into an economic recession, but it's also one of the last to come out, usually. So things have to get better off the mountain in the bigger cities, the urban areas, where we generate our traffic from for it to get better here. Mm -hmm. Um, now, our economy's been good. We've had businesses say last year that they've had the best year they've had since um, before the recession. That's great. So we have others saying that they're already getting past 2009 or 2008 and 2007 numbers, which were the best years. But um, <clears throat> one of the indicators is that um, when real estate starts to sell and get hot in Florida, then that helps our economy here because people are down there. They want to sell their homes, come here and build seasonal homes. So they're starting to sell those houses. So I think the building industry and real estate industry are both looking at some very um, optimistic numbers maybe this year. Perfect. So people start coming back and um, hopefully things, you know, from there then it trickles out into the rest of the economy. People have to furnish those houses they eat and they you know they shop in our stores and do all those good things so we're excited about that Definitely. that real estate is getting better in Florida well yeah so. there you go <laughs> it helps us up here that's right now some other things the chambers done this year um, I wanted to mention our seminars we've done several this year even in the winter months we've done um, we had one great one in January called how to work on rather than in your business, which was very good. Um, trying to help people think about, you know, just not working so hard inside the business, but being outside looking in and working on it to make it more successful. Right, thinking outside the box there. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing that we've done is, <clears throat> and these seminars, we are partnering with Caldwell Community College. Their small business center um, <coughs> provides these seminars um, and speakers that they bring in for us. And the uh, second one we had was um, succession planning for small business. 
which is teaching business owners how to transition their ownership from one generation to the other, perhaps, or to teach them how to perhaps sell their business when they're ready to retire, or, or to their employees. Uh, some businesses are sold to the employees. So that was a, a good one. But we've got one coming up uh, Thursday on March 6th, which, and by the way, these are open to anyone, not just members of the chamber. But it's uh, disaster preparedness for small business. And this kind of came about after the big hurricane back in Louisiana, back, um, which one, it was Rita, I guess, when so many businesses were wiped out completely. So <clears throat> this is not to say that we'll have a hurricane here in the high country, but there are a lot of disasters that small business needs to be ready for. Absolutely. And uh, it could be, uh, well, up here, I know this winter, we had a lot of cases of uh, broken pipes and um, floods and right. businesses. Those are disasters or Absolutely. can be. So. Hope people will come out for that. It is uh, coming up Thursday. It is at Chateau, and um, they can call the chamber and um, get information about how to sign up for that. And uh, then we're also planning a technology fair on March 20th, which will be um, <clears throat> held at the new public house. And we're going to have, the, basically we're going to have some computer geeks there. <laughs> so um, everybody has problems with their phones, their iPads, their computers, and, you know, their email and all these things that they need to know kind of a little bit about, can you help me with this? So it's going to be one of those seminars where you go in and say, can you help me with this? So we're going to have people there that know websites. And, you know, a lot of people have problems with their websites, don't know what to do with them. So right. hopefully this will meet a need. It sounds like something I need to go to because a computer and I are just not friends. No. <laughs> <laughs> we have lots of problems. I yell at it and it doesn't do what I want it to do. So. Uh, kicking yelling's, him doesn't help either. No, I was going to say yelling is probably not the answer, but... <laughs> So when is that one again? That is uh, March 20th from 9 to 11 at the new public house. Okay. And um, so I think, uh, you know, these folks are not going to diagnose huge problems right on the site there, but they will be able to diagnose small things and help people, and then they'll share business cards, and if they've got more problems, they can come out and help. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. That's great networking. It is. And those are our members that are providing those services for them. So. That's great. We'll also do a customer service seminar in May, as we always do, late May or early June, after, um, after people hire up for the spring season. Right. So. And that's coming up. It is. So. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is a totally different subject. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it's the only thing I can really point to that we're... Uh, that's going on here in March is um, March 11th is the 125th anniversary for the town of Blowing Rock. Interesting. And it's beautiful over there too, so. Well, it's, um, it was established in 1889 um, and awarded its charter by the General Assembly. Um, it has been a destination resort for 125 years. We started with 340 hardy year-round folks that wanted to live over there in that climate. And uh, we're up to about 1,300 year-round residents now. That's wonderful. So that's good progress over 100 years. Yes. But uh, 125, actually. Um, now, a lot of people say, well, a lot, of, a lot more people will live over there than that. And that's true, they do. But in the city limits, it's 1,300 year-round residents. Mm -hmm. And then we get up to about 8,000 in the summer with our seasonal residents. And then we will have visitors as well on top of that. So we've, you know, hosted um, as a seasonal resort destination uh, hundreds of thousands of visitors over the years and primarily seeking refuge from the heat off the mountain. And that's, that's where we get our biggest season. But uh, it is a very special place to live, work, and play. And um, one of the things that we're doing uh, – that the Blowing Rock Historical Society and Blowing Rock Art and History Museum combine to do every year, present these red and bronze oval plaques for businesses 
or residents actually uh, to honor them from a historical perspective. So most of them are in the downtown area, and most of them are businesses. But uh, they have presented 26 of these uh, plaques to date, and this year's recipients will be the uh, little ice house on Maple Street, which for people that don't know, that's where the um, ticketing office is for the wine festival. It's right outside the big wine festival tent. It's a little rock building that's been all kinds of things over the years, but it was built as an ice house where they would take ice out of the lakes and put it in this little rock building and they would cover it in sawdust and keep it over the, win over the summer. And that's how people got their ice back in the old days. So um, they're also going to present one to the <coughs> home of Charlie and Harriet Devant, who Dr. Devant uh, is, you know, prominent was a prominent physician in our town, and uh, so their home will get one. The location of Sonny's Grill, of course, Sonny's Grill is gone. It was torn down a few years ago, but uh, where it was will be a, a bronze plaque. And the Church of the Epiphany, which is, a, most people don't know it, that Bowling Rock does have a Catholic church. The Church of the Epiphany is up on, um, <clears throat> off Goforth Road, around behind the Green Park Inn and the golf course. Okay. Beautiful rock uh, church up there. So they'll have cake and punch and gifts uh, next Tuesday, the 11th, from 2.30 to 4.30. It is a drop-in, and they'll do a uh, seven-minute presentation on the uh, history of Blowing Rock. Uh, I mean, we've got to get that in seven minutes. But um, we've had a lot of colorful characters over there over the years. So, And one that they're going to especially honor or salute this time is Joe Clark, who was the first mayor. But um, it's uh, going to be a great time. Everyone's invited, the public. Um, please come to Town Hall next Tuesday. It's going to be great. I'm ready for some warm weather, too, because I love walking down the streets and shopping in the shops there in downtown Blown Rock and the park and Killens and <laughs> all that good stuff. So very, very exciting. Lots going on in Blown Rock, it sounds like. It is. Great time. A great time to plan, too. I mean, we're, mm -hmm. you asked me earlier about the wine festival, and that's mm -hmm. what we're <clears throat> working on. That's in April, so a lot of activity has to be done get that ready. I'm sure. So it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of things going on in Blowing Rock. And thank you so much for coming in and talking to us. Well, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, and we will be right back with more MTN Live in the Mountains.